so class 10 today we are going to start with the next chapter that is sermon at banaras okay so what is the meaning of sermon first of all sermon means a religious talk or some moral lesson at some religious subject or it is related to any religious subject so sermon at banaras it is related to the great can say saintly a um, uh, saintly you can say personality a person who is full of wisdom that is mahatam mahatma buddh gautam buddh okay so you know that gautam buddh has given us a new path of you can say salvation he has provided us with new wisdom that is of attaining salvation of attaining you can say peace with inner self he has taught us that it is only by introspecting by meditation can attain the path of self realization we can move over the path of self realization and it is only by realizing ourselves we will be able to come completely at peace and it is the only way how we will be able to attain peace and how we will uh how we will you can say achieve our god also because ultimately the reason of our existence on this earth is to have complete communion with god and how we can communicate with god we can communicate with god only if we will you can say if we will have complete you can say realization of ourselves because ultimately there is god god is dwelling within ourselves only in our soul only and it is just because of this you can say communion ultimately the aim of our life will be fulfilled so here in this chapter sermon at banaras gautam buddh he has given an important lesson of life and death first part of this chapter is a story of kisa gautami whose son was dead she has gone from one door to another in order to ask for mustard seeds but as said by gautam buddha but the condition of gautam buddha was that he should find those seeds from mustard seeds from the house where nobody is dead ever but is it possible that nobody will be dead in any house in past generation father mother or any you can say person will be dead okay so she was not able to find such kind of house so ultimately it is just because of this reason that she has come to realize the re reality of life that death is inevitable we cannot we will never avoid death and it is just because of this reason death is a part of our lives also so what we have to understand understand the reality of life that life and death they both exist each other if there is life there will be definitely be death and we should adjust accordingly because if we will lament over death if we will feel sorry after death of our near and dear ones of course of course we feel pain he is not saying not to feel any kind of you can say pain of course we feel pain when up you can say near and dear ones are dead but ultimately what is the result the thing is that that we need to adjust ourselves according to the changing phase in our life as the change of course brings pain but we should understand that of course it is a part of life and we should move forward and this is what we have read in the wall poem also that a boy should learn to adjust with losses right so all the religious saints all the religious gurus they are ultimately delivering us one reality of life that is death is inevitable we can never avoid death in our life this is but of course the reality of life that if there is life anything that has got its birth on this earth it must definitely will come to an end and this is what exactly the sermon at banaras is all about you will find the first part of the chapter quite easy and you will get because it is of course a story of kisa gautami but the other half of the story is 
delivering very deep meaning so you have to interpret each and every meaning of the line to understand it in the deepest sense okay so let us start with this chapter the sermon at banaras right so we are going to start just a moment please yes sermon at banaras so here it is given use a dictionary so this we will do later on as the meanings of the words we will come to know side by side in the chapter so sermon at banaras gautam buddha 563 bc to 483 bc this is the time period of gautam buddha when he was born he began life as a prince named siddhart gautam you know that he was uh you can say he was such a simple man okay uh, who was living a princely life but he has renounced his princely life to to go into the jungles to go into the forest to sit separately in order to attain the reality of life the truth of life and it is just because of his you can say self realization process that he has come out to be with his words of wisdom which words of wisdom the words of wisdom which are of course uh which are of course a part of you can say which are of course a part of the reality of life that yes we must understand these words of wisdom so that we can realize ourselves so that we can have complete communion with god as the sole reason of the existence of mankind is to have communion with god to join yourself with god so there are number of number of you can say religious channels which are telecasting uh these uh, you can say sermons of various religious gurus and ultimately all are telling us to realize yourself how we will realize ourselves it is only by getting words of wisdom by realizing the reality of life <laughs> to have control on you can say five vicars of our life which are ultimately destroying our life okay we must be free of any kind of greed we must be free of anger we must be free of any kind of prejudices we must be free of any kind of you can say discrimination and yes exactly but of course this is really very difficult to come out of these five vicars it is not possible these are of course the distractions in our life and they have brought a lot of distraction in our life because of which what happens that we are ultimately gathering so much of negativity around ourselves that we our lives they turn out to be a vicious circle vicious circle means the one when problem is giving rise to another problem and out of this vicious circle we will never be able to come out we feel that we are very sad there is no reason of our existence there is lot of stress there is lot of distress in our lives but ultimately how we can come out of it by following the path of truth truth of life by following the path of reality so um, a lot of religious education is related in this chapter is related to this chapter so focus completely upon what is being said in this chapter so as i know that the gautam buddha whose original name was siddhart gautam he was born in a, a born to a you can say king and he has led a princely life okay you must have read that chapter that he has seen uh in that uh, he was felt by the pain of a duck or dove and ultimately then ultimately he has you can see he renounced his this kind of princely life he has gone out of his house he spent many years to attain wisdom okay so students are still answering so in northern india he was born at 12 he was sent away for schooling in the hindu sacred scriptures and four years later he returned home to marry a princess so yes of course he was sent away for schooling right like mm, like the children of gurus they are sent to attain all type of knowledge knowledge of scriptures scriptures means religious books and then also he has also got his knowledge in the you can say in other skills which are important for the life of you can say princes he has got that education he has spent 4 years there and after that 4 years 
when he came back home it was the time as he has grown up to get married and he has married a princess they had a son we all know that and lived for 10 years as befitted royalty and for 10 years he has lived his life befitted means perfectly having all the you can say all the enjoyments and all the luxuries of princely life he led his life and here to for shielded from the sufferings of the world and here to for means till then he was completely shielded as a prince he was not able to know what suffering is what pain is because whatever they desire immediately is being presented in front of them he had a happy life a lot of wealth he has a lot of wealth he had one son also he was married also and no other problem was there in his life never had he suffered any kind of you can say pain in his life but but for how long as pain is an inevitable part of our life but for how long we can live without pain so during his princely life he was completely shielded from this kind of you can say <coughs> any kind of suffering so while out hunting he chanced upon a sick man then an aged man and then a funeral procession funeral means the last rites of during death ceremony procession means gathering and finally a monk begging for alms so one day when he was out for shoot, for his hunting because you know in older times people used to hunt they hunt deers they hunt you can say birds also it was a sort of play sort of entertainment but it is because that too much of hunting has taken place because of which the number of these animals they are decreasing and ultimately it is being considered that hunting as a you can say hunting as a uh, as a you can say it is a crime these days there are many laws against hunting but during old times this was a source of entertainment for prince for princes they used to hunt they used to entertain themselves and it is just because of this reason that when he has gone for hunting one day chance upon means by chance he has met he has he has always been shielded from any kind of suffering but during that time what has happened that he was chanced upon a sick man looking at the sick man he has come to know yes what sickness is he has felt the pain of that sickness then he has met an aged man also he has come to know that there are very difficulties in aged life when a person becomes old and he has to suffer a lot then he has also met a funeral procession in which the last rites of a death person are being performed by their relatives by his near and dear ones and so many people were crying so many were feeling sorry for that and they were you can say they thought that they thought that their life would be unimaginable because of this so what happened finally then he saw a monk who is quite a religious man he was begging for alms this was really very you can say unbearable for him then he has come to know yes there is lot of suffering in this world and he was suffering because all of that so these sights so moved him that he at once went out into the world to seek enlightenment so enlightenment word is very often used but i think that it holds a very deep meaning what kind of deep meaning it holds is that it holds a lot of you can say dedication it holds a lot of you can say seriousness on part of a person that he undergoes this kind of you can say serious process and ultimately he has spent years of you can say his dedication towards a particular purpose to attain the reality of life to attain wisdom so enlightenment what actually enlightenment is it is means a state of having spiritual knowledge and how spiritual knowledge is attained 
it's not an overnight process it takes sometimes years long and what we what we know about our spiritual knowledge it is all because of you can say all those saints who have undergone this process of hardships they have you can say they have uh, they have left their you can say luxurious as well as you can say easy go life and they have gone through many hardships in order to know the reality so whatever the reality of life we are having we have learned from the experiences of these great men and it is the hardship the labor as well as the you can say difficulties that has been faced by these great men that has led to all kind of you can say spiritual knowledge to be spiritually rich is of course a process of you can say labor labor it's not like that of hard work you put it's not a physical hard work it's a sort of hard work you put with your brain you put with your mind it means like uh, to seek enlightenment is to tame your mind and i don't think so <coughs> that it is easy to tame your mind is it easy no it's not easy suppose you sit for in order to recite the name of your guru or you sit just for a while to read that holy you can say a part padte ho ya kuch bhi read karte ho religious then what happens there are so many distractions in your mind you people are so distracted that not even for a second you are able to focus upon that you can say that religious practice of reading why because so many distraction means our mind is wandering at a very fast speed at that time because we we settle down at one place but to make you can make yourself sit at one place by thinking at once yes if i want to sit it means you sit at that place but to tell your mind to sit at one place no it will never follow you it is really very very difficult to follow up your you can say to it is very it is very difficult to let your mind follow you whatever you tell your mind he will never listen he is like you can say one of the you can say satan he is like it is like a satan okay satan jisko aap hindi mein shaitan bolte ho theek hai because in english literature satan is of course considered as you can say those you can say the power within ourselves which is responsible for destroying us okay so it means that spiritual enlightenment or spiritual knowledge it is only gained when you tame your mind and it's force really very difficult and these religious gurus what they have done they have a force try to tame themselves to tame themselves for such a long period of time ultimately it is just because of taming their mind they are able to ultimately get the realities of life and you know life is too short to learn from your own experiences so whatever we learn today it is only because of the experiences of these great men that these great men they have provided their knowledge they have provided their you can say experiences and it is just because of this reason that we learn from their experiences okay so enlightenment means to seek spiritual knowledge so the sadi said so moved him that he went out into the world to seek enlightenment so finally he thought this is not a life worth while to live in this manner in which a person will have only you can say a person will have only this kind of world where everything is available at just one click or where everything is available at just one you can say with your one word then he thought if this if what kind of life i am living is called as life then what is this kind of life where a man is aged one where a man is suffering where someone is dead so he said i have never faced this kind of life so he actually wanted to know the real meaning of life what are the rules behind our life what are the rules that are moving our life he wanted to know these rules so for this ultimately what has happened he thought to leave his 
world of luxuries to leave to leave his you can say easy go life and ultimately he has gone into the world leaving all the luxuries behind with only his you can say two clothes that he was wearing into this world to finally find out what actually life is to get spiritual knowledge what what are the rules that are driving our life how we can come to know the reality of life for that he has gone into this world and concerning the sorrows he had witnessed concerning the sorrows means he wanted to know that what are the reasons for these kind of sorrows and sufferings that are prevalent in the lives of others not of course is but in the lives of others but he was so deeply moved by those sorrows by these sufferings that he wanted to actually know the reality of these sufferings <clears throat> he wandered for 7 years means it took him 7 years i think of course these are of course less years because you know that old rishi muni saints and seers they used to sit for thousands of years in meditation in order to have communion with god you can ima imagine very well that how they have tamed themselves right so what happened he wandered for 7 years and finally sat down under a peepal tree so he wandered for 7 years he did not find the way how to get this kind of spiritual knowledge finally he sat down under a peepal tree you know in older times and even today this peepal tree it is considered to be quite auspicious quite a religious people used to worship this tree because they have their roots for thousands of years back and where he wanted to stay what means he thought he made a firm resolution to stay until enlightenment came so he thought that he would sit under that tree until he would attain enlightenment enlightened after 7 days he renamed the tree the bodhi tree that is tree of wisdom he sat there and he made a resolution with his mind that until enlightenment won't come to my life i won't go anywhere and he would sit under that tree until he will attain enlightenment until he will get spiritual knowledge so finally after 7 days what happened he renamed this tree when he got enlightenment so this is bit you can say it's a mystery for me also even i am always trying to find out the meaning of this that how he has attained enlightenment means what happened okay what happened to him that he thought that now i am enlightened for that i have not found any appropriate book to get this knowledge i am still whenever i read this chapter i am still wondering that how he has come to know that now i am enlightened what happened to him at that time that he thought that i have got spiritual knowledge and what happened in those 7 days that he thought that i am enlightened for this answer this answer even i am not getting any view so i am always trying to find the answer of this that how he has got enlightenment what happened to him that he thought that now i am enlightened so this is my unanswered question till now if you know and if you will ever come to know kindly discuss with me so coming back here so after 7 days what happened to him that he renamed when he was enlightened when he got enlightenment then he renamed this tree as tree as the bodhi tree what is the bodhi means bodhi means knowledge so it means that he has renamed this tree as tree of wisdom and he began to teach and to share his new understanding so at that time what happened that he tried to share his new understanding means whatever knowledge he has got whatever wisdom he has got he tried to share it with others so you know that knowledge it is a kind of you can say it is a kind of treasure which can never be stolen and which never can take from yourself or never can take hold of its custody 
because the more you share it with others the more it grows the more it flourishes and this is the only type of treasure which can never be stolen and which can never be taken hold of its custody by anyone else so finally what happened he began to share his new understandings at that point he became known as the buddha it means the awakened or enlightened so when he was enlightened when he has got this kind of spiritual knowledge he was called as buddha buddha means the awakened or the enlightened one so the buddha preached his first sermon at the city of banaras so his first sermon sermon means first religious teaching first religious talk where it was held it was held at banaras so this is the reason why this chap name of this chapter is sermon at banaras first sermon is was given there and what was that first sermon this we are going to read in the story of kisa gotmi ahead so so his first sermon was given at city of banaras which is the most holy of the dipping places on the river gangas and that sermon has been preserved and is given here okay so and you know that river ganga <coughs> it has its you can say holy existence of course uh, in mahabharata in ramayana everywhere river ganga is given great importance you people know better because you belong to hindu religion that what importance this great river holds it is a sign of purity it is a sign of you can say uh, it is a sign of you can say prosperity also so and moreover the holiness which is associated with this great river is still present even today in haridwar where the people used to have a holy dip they consider that all their sins they are washed away by having a holy dip there so religious beliefs we are also associated with it so there while he was sitting at the banks of you can say river gangas so there he has given his first sermon and it is preserved there it reflects that buddha's wisdom about one in scrutable kind of suffering it is unscrutable means unscrutable means which can never be understood so what he has given he has given a sermon it reflects his wisdom he has shown his wisdom about this kind of you can say reality of life which is of course ununderstandable which we are not able to understand and this is of course this kind of you can say reality of life that he has given in this you can say sermon at banaras of course right so this we are going to read in the story of kisa gotmi tomorrow so this first part is our story but the second part is again carries a very deep meaning you will find you can see in the next page this is story of kisa gotmi and in the next one see this part of the chapter it holds very deep meaning so you should understand each and every line and each and every line is so meaningful that you will get question out of it okay so that's all for today if you want to ask me anything or if you have doubts you can ask me now